sorry I shook you like an earthquake. But anyway, so for today's video, it is impulsive and random. I've been wanting to make this for quite some time and talk about this topic. I just didn't know when and how. And I really don't have any notes prepared. My handy dandy phone is that away and it's not here with me and I won't be using notes because I don't have notes. So it's just going to be, is it at or from or off the top of my head? However you phrase that phrase, whatever. So it's going to be, um, I'm going to be talking about shyness versus social anxiety. And technically you could say that I have both or I understand both. I've had experiences that go into both shyness, like a shy, quiet personality, as well as social anxiety. The anxiety that I have is specifically, and in particular, social anxiety. So those things can correlate and match up and go together quite a bit. If you take depression and anxiety, for example, you take those two individual things, both very hard in their own ways, you combine them. So it's even harder and they fight against each other and they're at war one with the other just all the time and um, I've experienced depression as well and then that morphed into bipolar disorder at least it was diagnosed later as bipolar instead of depression so it started as major depression but then come to find out years after I was diagnosed it's like hey it's different so anyway that's a little bit of my mental history but just going back, if we rewind and freeze to the topic of anxiety and depression, they can often go together. So they're hard enough on their own, but a lot of mental illnesses out there, disorders, issues, hard things like that, all of those challenges, right? They can often go together because the characteristics and traits, they can either be so close or they like feed off of each other and it just creates basically this madness of illness in your mind and with my shyness and anxiety right um I think I was and I don't want to say this I don't know how to say this but I'm not sure if you can really be born with anything like you can be born with a mole you can be born with a head of hair you can be born with this or that but I mean upstairs in your brain there's not a lot of research and test tests this is that, um, done with infants and there probably should not be because they're growing they are just innocent fragile things and that's how we all start and we have to be careful and we don't remember those times it's very rare that you can go back to age three and pull out this experience here and you remember this and that of your life by and at age three if that makes sense so an infant can they really feel that anxiety coming and then have it progress as they get older have that anxiety grow and maybe even spiral like in my case well we don't know because we're not infants and we don't really test infants the way that we would test or study either a preteen or a teen or young adult or adult you know we look at disorders mental health emotional health we look at that with the growing stages as we grow as we progress in age in life in mind in body we look at those things and it can really start with adolescence it can start with puberty and that's when things really manifest themselves. So it can be in childhood, of course, like my anxiety. This is where I go back to the born thing, born thing. Like, was I born with anxiety? That's what it feels like. My anxiety and shyness, I remember it has been my friend or I guess you could see it as an enemy for as long as I can remember. My face would turn red. I hated public speaking. It was hard for me to make friends, but I somehow found friends and friends found me. My mom would always say, you have such great friends, Em. You know, so, and if I look back, I remember those friendships, those people, their kindness, you know, and I guess I did have that, but it felt 
so isolating and I felt so alone and I was like forced to be independent and introverted because I couldn't talk as openly. I, I was not as comfortable. So I just felt so alone and the anxiety was almost disabling. I would stutter. I grew up with a speech impediment and I've outgrown it for the most part. It can come up just randomly. It can get bad as I seem to call it. I see my stutter as bad, you know, but it's just, it's a trait of anxiety. There's all kinds of traits of anxiety. There's all different types of anxiety. Some can't leave the house. That's a giant fear for them. And mine is with other people. It happens around other people. And I get so nervous before anything, before I leave the house. So it's not like the fear, I forget the name, but it's not the fear of leaving the house. It's the fear of social gatherings, social interaction. It can be an errand. It can be school, especially. It can be even going to church. And with COVID right now, um, we are forced to be a lot more introverted and independent with the distancing and the precautions like that. And so with me, I find myself thriving. And I've gone back and forth between being extroverted and introverted. And I would say about myself that I'm back to the introverted version of myself. And I think the anxiety plays a role into that. Just because you're an introvert doesn't automatically mean that you have anxiety. And personalities are a lot of fun for me to talk about. Well, it's probably not that fun for you to hear about, but it's fun for me to like think about, talk about, express, whatever. So anyway, you can be an extrovert with social anxiety, you can be an introvert with social anxiety, but at the same time, you don't have to be either of those things to have or not have that trait, the trait of anxiety. So where am I going with this? I'm just ranting and rambling at this point. This is all over the place and you're going to hear this and that, I guess, and I'll just talk until probably the camera stops rolling. But anyway, I almost choked on my gun. Almost died on camera. No, just kidding. Anyway, um, so yeah, the speech impediment and some symptoms you might feel, your heart might race. I've really experienced that, but because of the meds, my heart is more still than not. I don't really notice pounding anymore. It's very rare that I have that. Sometimes you'll sweat, like before class, after class, I have to apply deodorant because I'm just a mess and I just feel gross and I'm just so nervous. And my mom says that it doesn't show. My parents will comment if I make a comment. Like, they'll say it doesn't show. Sometimes I'll be so paranoid after anything, like interaction, people over after they're gone. I'll go to my parents like, did I do okay? Was I awkward? Did I say this right? And I'll, like, replay just everything that happened in my head. And I'll express some of those thoughts and concerns to my parents. And they always say I'm fine. They don't have anything really bad to say. But it's just, it's so internal. Sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. And with me, like, it's the speech impediment history, the stutter, red face, like, all the time, especially when I was talking. And it's just the heart would just pound and beat so fast, so annoyingly. And what else? Um, what did I just say? Like, the armpits, the excessive sweating, just out of nerves. And... It's things like that. Those are the things that I can think of, like, offhand. Um, people experience all kinds of things. There's driving anxiety. Like, Sarah Hawkinson experiences driving anxiety, or did, to a point where it was almost disabling. I love her. She's great. She's probably not ever going to watch this, but shout out. I love you, you know. But anyway, so... Driving anxiety was something that I never really thought of as a concern because I love to drive. Not in ice. That's not fun. Not on ice. Obviously not. And especially here in Idaho, in my part of Idaho, we get a lot of icy roads. But anyway, driving anxiety was a form of anxiety that I never thought about, that I didn't really hear about. I didn't know anybody with that until I watched Sarah Hawkinson and heard her story. So she for the most part, grew out of it, and she's been able to change. Not everybody can grow out of their anxiety. I think mine has improved, and it has decreased for the most part. And my comfort, like surviving anxiety, going through with the anxiety, facing my fears, facing the anxiety, all that, I think it has improved. And 
my comfort in it has really increased while the anxiety itself has decreased. Like I'm enjoying my life more. But after COVID and when we have people over and when we see people more and life goes back to normal, if there is such a thing as that, especially after a pandemic, who knows? It's just life will be more social and people will interact more probably. And I don't think that's something that I'm mentally prepared for. I feel like I'm not stable enough because, yes, my anxiety has improved. If you were to compare the old me, like baby Emily, like years ago, elementary school, you know, it's just improved with every year, I would say. But still, it's very hard. And my worst fear, sometimes it feels like my only problem, not in like a haughty way. And I got to stop doing this. It's kind of fun. Um, not in like a haughty way. But my like only seemingly only problem is the speech. I'm terrible, terrible, well, I probably am a few things, but I'm terrified that it's going to happen and I'm going to slip up and it's going to be embarrassing and people will judge me, think low of me, they won't think I'm smart and that's very important to me to, for people to see me as smart. Um, that sounds kind of conceited, but I want to come across as intelligent and I think I'm not the only one. It's important to, I don't know, learn in this world, be educated in this world. And I take that very, very seriously. I want people to think of me as a smart individual. Like if someone were to describe me, I would rather be called smart than attractive because that's very important to me. That's a quality that I want to have throughout my life, just improve upon my smarts and grow my mind. So anyway... Um, don't know where that came from, but, right, the speech. So, you have a speech impediment, you have any form of it, it can be very hard and very isolating and debilitating, I guess is the word. So, mine is not nearly as bad as it was. My anxiety, my social anxiety, really stems from the stutter that I grew up with and that I almost grew out of, but not quite. So that's where the fear comes from. I think if it were any form of any other anxiety, which did not relate to human interaction, you know, if it weren't the social anxiety, then I don't think the stutter would be a concern. I don't think I would have even had a speech impediment growing up and for as long as I did. So we're not really getting to the shyness or sh the shyness is on this side. The shyness versus the social anxiety. We're not really seeing that we're more hearing the links of them, how they can stem off of each other, feed off of each other, and my experience with both. So because of the social anxiety that I feel like I was born with, but not really, that is, I think, why I became so shy and quiet. I don't think it was the other way around, although my parents, and I'll say this really fast and then I'll move on from this, my parents, they saw me as like the good kid. I was the good one in the family. I was like the angel in the family. Because I didn't talk, I didn't say anything wrong because I didn't talk. And I didn't fight back, I didn't argue, I didn't whatever, I was not con confrontational. And then I kind of grew out of that and I went through a phase in high school where I was just a bit much. And, you know, I really changed, a lot of people change. I still have that anxiety, but I wouldn't really call myself shy anymore. I can be, especially if the anxiety is really bad. Um, some people might see my personality as shy and they might judge me for that, but it's just like, that's my personality. Like I've been told I have a soft spoken voice, but I talk a lot. And I've been told that I'm extroverted when I feel more introverted. I've been told this and that about myself. And it's hard for people to like name you. Like you're loud, you're quiet, you're skinny, you're fat. Like there's all these things, all these names. And I think you're really judged if you're on the shy side. We live in a very like extroverted world, but at the same time, people are coming out as introverts. So extroverted world as in we have to rely on communication and we need communication to survive. We, we do. And that was really hard for me growing up. And I'm still not getting to the versus part. But um, anyway, so shyness um it's the fine line you don't have to be both you can only have one you might only have one you know but um shyness is like a personality trait 
or shyness can stem off of anxiety of any any sort, any kind. Social anxiety, um, they, they don't have to be linked. They don't always go together. So you might have social anxiety, but you're extroverted. You might be a loud personality, a big personality. You know, there's not really always a pattern. The human brain and each personality is so unique. The human brain is amazing, and every personality is just so unique and different and distinct. So, let's see how long I've been talking. Oh, not that long. Proud of myself. Camera will turn off in about 15 minutes. So, anyway. Um... <laughs> I'm not really wearing a bra, by the way. I'm clearly not shy anymore because I totally would have. It's a bralette. But okay. Um. Yes. So let's just continue forth. And I have to like recollect my thoughts, even though I don't really have any specific thoughts. But um, a part of my social anxiety, I'm just gonna kind of ramble and rant and just go off on different tangents and hopefully I'll, I'll circle back to um, the topic which is the versus thing so um, a part of why I think I have social anxiety and why I still do is because of my weight um, I have a fast metabolism I love to run I just have that type of build I have that type of whatever it runs in my family just having kind of a scrawny build, like we're very small boned. And I go through times where I eat a lot, like I right now, I eat a lot at night. I eat a lot before bed, and if you want to gain weight, that's something to consider. That's something that I do and live and practice. Not everybody does that. I just happen to. I eat more throughout the day. I feel sick, nauseous, whatever, in the morning. I'm not pregnant, but that's just how I've been for years. And... It sucks, and it's really hard and annoying and obnoxious. It's just, it's how my body is. It's the way I am. And so, um, my weight, like I've been called anorexic. People didn't know my eating habits. It was hard for me to eat in front of people, and it still is if I don't know them well. And, like, I really have to be comfortable and confident at the table and around those people at the table. And it can be hard to feel comfortable eating, especially when you've been um, made fun of for your body your whole life. And you see your body all the time. You see yourself in the mirror. You, you see yourself before and after you shower. You see yourself. And when people comment on you and call you names and make fun of your body, your appearance, it's going to haunt you for the rest of your life. And I've had rude things said to me for a long time. And I don't get that as much anymore for a number of reasons, I would assume. Like right now, I'm basically an online student. I don't really like see people, interact with people in a classroom. And there's other things too, like people mature and grow out of rude remarks, I feel like. And I've just had a different friend group of late. And these people, they're mostly and usually not judgmental. And if they are... I don't forget their words. So I'm the type of personality where I remember conversations and things said to me and things that I say. And I'm not so much like a facts type of person. Like I can't give you numbers, percentages, I suck ass at math. Like I'm not that kind of person. I'm very like emotionally charged, if that makes sense. It's probably the wrong term. I'm not used in the right context. But like that's just how my brain works. And that's where my personality goes, where, where my energy is at. And I'm chewing gum right now because my anxiety has been really bad like all day. Like ever since I went to bed last night, it was bad. Like I knew it was going to be an anxious day in the morning and it was and it still is. But the gum helped. But anyway, um, yeah, so shyness and social anxiety, um, Let's go back to the shyness. So my personality type, this is where I was trying to go earlier and then I went off on something else. So yeah, I've been told, like I have more soft-spoken voice. 
I've been told like it's a princessy voice. I don't know what that means. Like Disney, I don't know. I think like Snow White was what a few people said, which I guess is a compliment if that's a good thing, if that's a bad thing, I don't know. Basically, you can be offended by anything and you can take a compliment out of any conversation or not, you know, and I think that Snow White's cute. So I don't know. I don't know how, how to take that. I still don't. And it's been years. So um, soft spoken usually goes with quiet and shy. Not always, but soft spoken is just that way. But I'm a very quirky person, I've been told as well. And again, these are names that people have provided to describe me with or without my permission or approval, I guess. You can't choose how people see you. You can't choose how you really come across, how people interpretate, interpret, there we go, your personality and who you are. So you're not in charge of other people's reactions to you. Those are just the reactions that I have received these past few years and as I grew up. So soft-spoken, um, I think people might see me as shy when they first get to know me because of that soft-spoken voice that I tend to have or sometimes have, maybe I used to have it, I don't know. I don't really know how people perceive me nowadays, but I'm just kind of going off of what I can remember and reflect upon. But the shyness, they might see that as being shy and my personality type, like I can be pretty quiet or I can talk a lot, like that's kind of where I am. Um, I can be loud. It's just, it depends on the other person and the conversation and the jokes. Like, I'll get loud if there's jokes or a lot of laughing, you know. But that's not me all the time, I don't think. But I do tend to talk quite a bit. And that's just how I've been these past few years. Like, with every year it seemed that I was just talking more. But now, uh, maybe the introvertedness if that's a word, maybe the social anxiety because of COVID, you know, and plus just the lack of human interaction and my friend groups around here. It's just, it's not the same and I don't talk as much and I live at home. So I really talk to my parents the most, but even then, you know, um, so yeah, I think people might see me that way. And I've been told like, I'm very sweet and innocent. Like that's how they have seen me the whole time that they know me and that's just who they see me as what kind of person i am to them and i can be sassy and snarky anybody can be me i know i've said mean things before and when people put you in a spot in a box like oh you're just the innocent one like i've always been the innocent one in the group like there's been comments about it there's been jokes about it like that's just me and every friend group that I have, like every group of friends in high school, I was always seen as like the innocent one. And it's hard for me to be mean and I joke like I don't know how to be mean, but everybody can be mean and I know that I can too. And you might mean it, you might not. Sometimes it's very rare I'm like intentionally mean like to get back at someone like through a conversation, like if anyone is mean to me, but I really don't think that I would try. I really don't. I mean, it's always something to improve upon, you know, just like anger. And I don't think I'm an angry person either. I'm pretty passive. And I just, I don't know, I don't really stay angry. The bipolar, the mood problems can kind of go up and down that way. But usually I feel worse than the blues or very elated, you know, up and down throughout the day. I try to strive for contentment, just flat, but the good kind of flat, not this and not like boring. No, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, just stable is the goal, but when you're bipolar, that's hard. And when you're bipolar, you might be an angry person. You might not. You might have anger issues or anger tendencies, whatever. But I really don't like feel that emotion that much and especially because it wasn't allowed in my house growing up and to this day it's really not. Like we would have soap in our mouth if we said anything close to rude, you know? So that's just what I was accustomed to. That was what I understood. Like it was just not okay. So the only emotion in my house was basically a 
a smile on your face. Like, you're happy even if you live under a bridge. Like, our happy family would still be happy if we lived under a bridge. That's, that's what my dad says all the time. And it's a good perspective, but is it healthy? I don't know. And I think it made my social anxiety worse. And it made me extra shy at times just because I felt like I had to be like a perfect soul. And no one is. No one is. So I think I've talked enough and a lot. Um, I guess just to like wrap up and end these thoughts to conclude. Um, no one can name you or define you. No disorder, no illness, physical, mental, emotional, no experience, no future opportunity, nothing can define you except for you, like who you are, who your soul is. That's who you are. That's your name. That is how you are defined truly. It's your identity. It's not what, what other people say about you. It's not even what you think about yourself if it's negative because you are a good soul. Well, for the most part, there's a lot of good people in this world. I know that there are bad people too. And I don't know if I can really say this of them. But for the most part, like, you're a good person. And no one really has the right to kind of hate on you or to put you down. But that's how it can be, like, towards your personality, towards your appearance. And I've experienced both of those areas just, like, through other people and their hurtful words and the things that they would do and say. It's just, it's your personality. So if you're shy, if your personality tends to have social anxiety um, signs, I guess, like if you have those things about you that fall into the category of social anxiety or shyness, it doesn't matter. So that's a little bit of my story and I don't know, 